Here we'll go on to Mitch Evans with Jaguar TCS Racing. You said before the race that for you it's always been an almost here at Monaco. P2 last year, P2 this year. But P2 is not, not that bad. I can see that obviously in your, in your post-race interview on the TV there, you were a little disappointed. But, you know, things went against you that, that hampered maybe your opportunity to make a, a bigger move. Um, yes and no. Um, look, I was feeling yeah, relatively good during the race. Obviously, the, the strategy involved and car positioning is absolutely critical. You've got everyone doing different things and trying to predict everyone else's kind of race is... is uh, is really tricky to navigate. Um, you've got some guys out there doing some wacky stuff as well and just trying to keep out of certain people's races or whatever is, is not easy. Um, but yeah, I felt like I felt strong. Um, I got some uh, big w wing damage, which I think affected me slightly, but um, I was lucky to get away with that. So I made a silly judgment with um, behind Tickham. Um, I'll probably hear it on the radio when it comes out um, in a couple, couple of days. But um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was a moment in the race where I thought um, it, it was for me today, uh, especially when I got into the lead. I thought it was maybe slightly early, but I was feeling good. Um, I feel like I think I had a slight energy advantage on Nick. Um, and obviously, Jake was coming pretty, pretty hot as well. So I was not expecting Nick to attack me when he, when he passed me. Um, if I could do the race again, I would have defended harder and, and well, been more aware and uh, yeah, and then I think if, if, if I did keep him behind for a couple more laps after that, it would have, would have been a different story, but look, that's the way it's gone today. Nick timed it perfectly. So um, full credit to him and his, his crew. And um, yeah, another almost for me this year, but uh, I have to look at the bigger picture. Um, you know, 18 points is, uh, is better than, you know, risking it all. And you know, uh, there's still a long way to go on this championship, so. You uh, heard on the team radio being given the go-ahead to try and regain the lead on lap 21 and then just half a lap later was that first safety car. W what was your emotion in the car there? Because I guess when you're out on track, you don't necessarily know instantly what the severity of the, the sort of incident is and whether, you know, you, that might be it. You may be finishing under that safety car when you were just literally given the go-ahead to try and push. Yeah, I think even then it was maybe slightly too late. Um... The energy target was starting to get a little bit too high and the, the coasting points were getting um, a little bit too short. So the chance of overtaking were, were tricky. I had a few goes at Nick, but he positioned his car well. If it was another track, it's a different story. But obviously around here, it's, um, you know, it's a little bit trickier just to make risky moves, uh, more easier moves. So um, yeah, but uh, that, that's the way it went today. Um, I tried my best. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, just a couple of critical points and, and uh, it slipped away. It's another one too for the Jaguar powertrain. Now, the pace for Jaguar TCS has been strong since the start of the season and a few things have gone against you. Now things have started to click and the results have come. What do you and the team need to do to maintain that throughout the rest of the season? I think just keep doing what, we, what we've been doing, to be honest. Um, look, everyone's improving. You know, the Porsches and, you know, that includes the Andretti's there super quick fish in the races. I feel like they've still got an advantage on us in the race when it comes to um, efficiency or, or energy advantage. Um, we seem to be better over a lap, so we, we can sort of start further up. But nowadays, it doesn't really matter as much. So um, we have to keep improving, keep keep charging on. But uh, yeah, but we've been doing a good job, but we can't stand still. Um, but we also can't really change the approach too much because it's been, it's been working. Uh, Jakarta next, you won the inaugural race in Jakarta last year. So given that you've been in great form recently and things are clicking, you must have a certain level of confidence going into that double header. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, this, this car is throwing different, different challenges at us compared to Gen 2. So it's not a given that we'll be, that we'll be good there or, or I'll be good. You know, the Hankook operates a lot differently in different climates and temperatures compared to the Michelin. Obviously, it's a whole new car. Um, it's going to be nice and uh, roasty there. Um, so uh, looking forward to that double header and waking up for that second day. It's going to be uh, it's going to be brutal. But yeah, obviously going to a, an event that you've done well in the past is always is always nice. And obviously off the back of the last few races, um, we'll be going there with um, obviously high hopes. But um, obviously the stuff racing now has really changed, so anything can happen.